a little bit of a problem that I'm going to need your help with, and it involves storage space. So the math department needs a lot more storage space in the office, so I'm calling this problem the storage crisis. So here's a picture of our math office. This space right here, this darkened in pink space, which actually measures 72 square feet, that's space that's actually available right now to put file cabinets. So we would like to get the best deal possible, obviously, with the math department, but we need to be able to fit it into this space. And we're trying to you know, save a lot of money, so we found two that we think are pretty good deals. Uh, I chose the IKEA file cabinet. This one costs $10. It's kind of a neon green color, kind of nice. Um, its base area is six feet squared, and it holds a total of eight cubic feet of file space. And then we have a taller cabinet from Jordan's, which costs $20 and its base area is a little bit bigger than the other one. It's eight feet squared, uh, but it, ho it actually holds more volume. Its file space is actually 12 cubic feet. So we want to figure out, should we buy all IKEA file cabinets? Should we buy all Jordan's file cabinets? Or should we buy some combination of both of them? And, and how many should we get? Because we, what we really want to do is maximize our space while minimizing our costs. So we're trying to create the optimal situation. Okay, and of course there's one issue, and that is that we are on a budget. So here's our budget. We have $1,400 for the entire math department, and we've designated 10% of that to office storage, meaning file cabinets. So 10% of 1400 well that's pretty simple. That's going to be $140. So let's try to look at this algebraically. Okay, so let's try this. Uh, Ms. Adams actually just joined me. Hi, everyone. So we're going to come up with some inequalities. So I like to write down what each variable stands for. That's a great so idea. I'm, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to do it down here. So is it okay if we let X be the IKEA cabinets? I agree. Yeah, so, the green one. And But instead of putting IKEA cabinets, I like to put the number of IKEA cabinets because maybe sometimes I'm talking about the price of them. And sometimes I'm talking about the number, so we have to be really clear about that. And I'll let Y be the number of Jordan's cabinets. So we have those two constraints. The floor space, we had a maximum of 72 square feet. So I'm going to set up an inequality here. We know that each IKEA cabinet takes up 6 square feet. Each Jordan's cabinet takes up 8 square feet. And does it make sense then if I put less than or equal to 72? Right, because I can't go past 72. And then for cost, uh, what do we have? $10 for each IKEA and $20 for each Jordans. And what was our, our maximum budget price on that? Uh, 140. Okay, so I'm going to say less than or equal to 140. Same reason. Perfect. Okay. So um, in that previous video, we talked about how to graph inequalities, and then we found their feasible regions. So I think we're going to do the same thing here. I like to start with finding the x and y intercepts. So I don't know how you find the x intercepts. Do you plug in zero? What do you like to do? Yes, to find the x intercepts, I would set y to be zero. Okay, so if I set y to be zero in the first case, um, I would get 6x is less than or equal to 72. Divide both sides by 6, and I get 12? 12. 12. Okay, yep. so I'm going to write that down. x intercept is 12, zero. And then the y-intercept, I'll just substitute a 0 in for x instead, and I would get 9. Yeah. Okay. And then for cost, our x-intercept would be 14. Yes. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. And then the y-intercept would be 0, 7? 7. seven. Yep. Okay. So I want to um, graph both of these lines. But since they're inequalities, we're going to have to shade. So how do you figure out which direction to shade? I mean, usually I plug in a point to see whether or not I need to shade in that area. What point do you usually plug in? Zero, zero. Okay, that usually. makes sense. Yeah. So I'll do the same thing. Um, I'll try zero, zero. And I'm going to see how that compares to the 72 here. So 6 times 0 plus 8 times 0, that's 0. Mm -hmm. And is 0 less than or equal to 72? Yes. Great. So if zero, 0, works... Then we want to shade so that it's included in the shading. 
So this line, I'm pretty sure when we graph it's going to be above zero, zero. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to write a little note here. We want to shade below. Perfect. Okay. And then on this side, if I plugged in zero, zero, I think we could all see that it's going to be less than or equal to 140. Yes. So I'm going to say shade below as well. Okay. So I think we're ready to graph this. I think we're ready. Okay, so um, our X and Y intercepts are going to affect what our scale should be. So I thought that if you looked at my grid, I have a 20 by 20 uh, window here. Is it okay if we go by ones on the X axis? Yes, we can. Because the lar the largest X we have to plot is 14. Great. So I'm going to just write down every five because I don't really feel like writing all these down today. I'm going to label that number of IKEA cabinets. Uh, what do you think about the Y axis? The largest Y that we have to plot is 9. Oh, so if I made it go from 0 to 10, that would be enough? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to make every box count for only half of a unit. Okay. So then this would be 1, 2, 8, 9, and 10. Perfect. Okay. Um, so I'm going to graph the first constraint, which was floor space. Yes. So I have a X intercept at 12 and a Y intercept at 9. And I'll do a different color for our cost. So our X intercept there was 14. Yep. And 7. 7. Great. Okay. And we want it to shade the feasible region. So we want to shade below, below both of the lines. I'm going to get my, my yellow highlighter out here. And I also want to point out um, why I already had this grid set up. Did you notice I already had the x-axis and y-axis there? Yes, and they were darker than the rest of the grid. They were. Um, so I know for a fact that I can't buy negative cabinets. So I'm only looking at the quadrant 1, if you remember your quadrants. Um, where the x-axis is positive and the y-axis is pos positive. So those lines are already there, so if they weren't already there, you should draw those in. Draw them in, right. Okay. So we know that we can't go below, let me make that a little darker, we can't go below the x-axis or to the left of the y-axis, mm -hmm. right? So we know that that's the, the edge of the region in that direction, and I want to be below the green line and below the red line. So that yellow quadrilateral, right? Yep. That's going to be our feasible reading. Right. So the whole reason we want to graph this is to see what combinations of cabinets we can buy, but we we already kind of knew that. Like, I know that I can buy four Ikea cabinets and four Jordan's cabinets. Like, I know I can do that. And it would still be in the shaded area. It, exactly. But the real question here wasn't what can we buy, it's what should we buy. Right. So we want to maximize our space. So I claim that these three corners, one of them is the answer. So I have to try these three points and see which one has the highest volume. Those two endpoints, I think we already know what those are. Those are the X and Y intercepts that we already found. Right. But this point right here, do you have any idea how we could figure out exactly where that is? Well, looking at that point, that, that looks like it's the intersection of our two inequalities that we started with. It is. And do you remember the first video in this chapter? Uh, I think it was Miss Marcus. She was talking about how we can solve things by graphing. Right, that's right. So if I looked at my graph right now, I would guess that that says 6, 4, 6, 4 and a half, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. Right? Um, however, I didn't use a ruler. That's right. I, I really, I don't trust what I did here. Even if I did use a ruler, I still don't know if I would trust it. Me neither. So I'm going to solve the system of those two lines. So I'm going to make my pen a little thinner here so we can we can solve a system. So the first equation was... So we have 6x yep. plus 8y equals 72. Okay. And then 10x plus 20y equals 140. Now, I don't know about you, but... Those look like pretty large numbers. I really don't feel like solving a system like that. No, I don't either. Can, I, we, can we simplify that? I, I would love to reduce, reduce those coefficients. So um, the first one that I noticed is that 10, 20, and 140, they're all divisible by 10. By 10, yep. So I'm going to change that one into x plus 2y equals 14. Very good. Perfect. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right, I just divide each coefficient by 10. Yeah. And I did it to both sides of the equal sign. That's totally fine. And the one above... Is that divisible by 2? Two? 2 is the highest... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Factor. Yeah, very good. So, um, if I divide everything by 2, I get 3x plus 4y equals 36. Yeah. Okay. So, I would much rather solve that system. Yes. All right. So, here I go. Uh, let me change color so I can see this better. I'm going to multiply... I like multiplying by the um, by negative 2 here, because it's, it's, I think it's easier to multiply by 2 than it is to multiply by 3. By 3, yeah, yeah. I agree. Okay, so the top one stays the same. Especially since we don't have a calculator. Exactly. And then I'm going to multiply the bottom by negative 2. And now I'm going to add those equations. So the y's cancel. I get x equals oh, that's nice. 8. So that worked out really nice. I'm just going to substitute back in. Okay. Oops. I said I was going to do it. I didn't do it. So I'm going to let x be 8. And I'm going to substitute into the simpler equation again. So uh, 2y equals 6. So y is 3. Perfect. So remember we said that point was 6, 4? Yeah, we were wrong. <laughs> Obviously wrong. So I'm going to write that as 8, 3. So we have these three points. This one was at 12, 0. This one was at 0, 7. Mm -hmm. And now the intersection is 8, 3. I know that one of those three points is going to give me my maximum space. Good. Okay. And remember that X is still the number of Ikea cabinets. Y is still the number of Jordan's cabinets. Great. So here is our graph again. Notice I already labeled this point um, 8, 3. So I'm going to try and see what is the actual volume of each of those points. So do you remember that each Ikea cabinet uh, had... 8 oh, cubic eight. feet. Okay, so I'm going to say 8 cubic feet per Ikea cabinet. And what was the Jordan's? 12. Okay, so our total volume is 8x plus 12y. Okay, so I'm going to try that 0, 7 point first. So our volume when x is 0 and when y is 7 is... Uh, it's at 84. Uh, 84, thank you. 84. Okay. So 84, I'm just going to put a little unit on here. Feet Perfect. cubed. Perfect. Okay. Do you think that that's going to be the highest one? I don't know. Do you have a guess? It's always good to have a guess. I know. It is always good to have a guess. I think I'm kind of, I think it's going to be 8-3. You do, but, but I don't. But I don't know. Uh, my here was my my feeling. When you looked at the numbers of the the IKEA cabinet versus the Jordan's file cabinet, I felt like you wanted to have the most possible Jordan's cabinets, right? Because they just had the most space, right? So this means you're just buying Jordan's cabinets, right? Zero IKEA, only some yeah. Jordans. Um. So this this is gonna be my guess. Okay. Okay. But you want to guess eight three? So let's try eight three. I think so. So. I'm going to do 8 times 8 plus 12 times 3. Okay, that's 64 plus 36? Yes. Okay, that's 100? That's 100. Okay, so already we know that your answer is better. Okay. Okay, so that was surprising. I, was didn't, surprising. I didn't expect that. And then let's just check this last point down here, which was 12, 0. So 8 times 12 plus 12 times 0. What is 8 times 12? 96? 96. Okay, so uh, you were close. right. You were right. You were definitely right. The intersection point, 8, 3, got us the highest volume. So I think we figured out what we should buy. We did. Okay, are you going to tell Miss Mahoney? I will tell her. Okay. Don't worry. Wait, let me, um, you know what? I'm going to write it down for you. Okay, thanks. Okay. So I think we should buy eight IKEA cabinets. That was X, right? Yes. And three Jordans? Yes. Does that sound good? That sounds awesome.